it stems from John Bowers and his idea that if you build a better loudspeaker, you'll sell it. So that drives everything that we do. We are always about research, we're always about innovation, and we're always about change. Uh, fundamentally, because we can't help ourselves. It's all about obsessive problem solving. You could argue this is part of a, of a company's DNA, but fundamentally, that's what we do as engineers. We, we try to make things better. In some ways, you could almost argue that the company works against itself to an extent because it's always been about this performance-orientated agenda. We aren't, in the nicest possible sense, cynical about the products that we do. We, we change things when we can change them. We change things when we have a new story to tell or a new technology to implement. So it's not in the same sense of, oh, three years are up, therefore we must change, therefore we must introduce something. It's much more about, do we have a genuine performance story to tell, therefore, at that point, that's when we think about introducing it into a product. At an emotional level, we're, well certainly I'm driven as well, I mean if you hear a piece of music uh, in a way you've never heard before, if you hear, if you hear things in a piece of music, you th hear aspects of the performance that you've never heard before, or it moves in a way you've never heard before, I mean that is, yeah, that is quite, quite very an attractive sensation, it's, uh, and it's, uh, it, yeah, and I guess the, the yeah, we, we try not to think of ourselves as too much as a, as being emo emotionally involved, but we kind of are, but, and that's, that's very rewarding indeed when you have that experience. It's why I get up in the morning and I really want people to hear music the way I think it should be. I really want it to be clear and precise. I want them to experience music in a whole better way. If I know something is broken or can be improved, I will just go for it without looking back and see if it's worth it or not. We're the biggest pain there is as far as everyone who knows us, because we will always push them to the, you know, to the edge of what they can possibly do. They'll tell us it's not possible and we'll make them do it. A struggle for perfection. So it's basically, if you know that something could be done much better or a little better, then you just go for it. The 800 Series Diamond is the world's most successful premium loudspeaker range. But the engineers at Bowers & Wilkins' Stenning Research Establishment saw this not as an achievement, but as a challenge. And even as the previous 800 Series Diamond launched in 2010, the passionate and dedicated team set about improving them. A struggle for perfection. So it's basically, if you know that something could be done much better or a little better then you just go for it with new tools new understanding and the benefit of many decades worth of experience they set about discovering how they could improve upon what many critics viewed as perfection the result in the new 800 series diamond the only major component that made the cut is the still groundbreaking diamond dome tweeter a perfect combination of rigidity and lightness, this remarkable tweeter dome raises the breakup point to an astounding 70 kilohertz for breathtakingly revealing treble. Elsewhere, everything has changed. After 40 years of successfully using Kevlar as a mid-range cone material, Bowers and Wilkins engineers discovered something that dramatically improves upon it, the new continuum cone. This new cone offers a performance improvement in the mid-range likened by Bowers and Wilkins' chief acoustic engineer to the one achieved moving from aluminium to diamond dome tweeters. Base drivers now use the aerofoil cone, a completely new shape of drive unit providing strength where it is most required to create improved pistonic performance and therefore better base. The iconic 800 series head has also been dramatically improved in the form of the turbine head, benefiting from a new material, a new sleeker shape and improved internal geometry. The cabinet structure of the new 800 series diamond has also changed, both inside and out, with a new reverse wrap design adding strength to the headed models in the range.
while a new, even stronger matrix bracing system provides for a much more inert and therefore better performing loudspeaker. All of these acoustic and engineering developments, plus many more, come together to bring Bowers and Wilkins closer than ever to the goal of true sound. The new 800 series diamond is the most technically advanced range of loudspeakers ever conceived. We don't sit there at the start and say, well, we're going to make a £100,000 loudspeaker. That's the wrong way of doing it. We sit there with a the view that we want to make the best loudspeaker we can. Um, but we are in the business at the end of the day at Bowers & Wilkins of trying to bring true sound to as many people as we possibly can. We want a large number of listeners to enjoy the experience and we want them to be able to enjoy that experience year on year. So we're not interested in technologies and techniques that can only be repeated 15 or 20 times a year and require such bespoke processes and such individual handcrafted techniques that you can't produce them in quantity in a factory. You could just go out there and buy the most expensive Jav units from OEM suppliers and do uh, an uh, over-engineered uh, cabinet in marble or steel or aluminium, uh, but that will be something which will end up in a very, very uh, bad place in terms of uh, performance to price ratio. Now the great thing about what we do is because we're innovative in technology and we're innovative in manufacturing processes, uh, we can produce something that's incredibly high performance and clearly it's expensive, but it's, I would argue, value. It's actually a good value proposition relative to some of the other super high-end loudspeakers that are out there. I don't think this is a super high-end loudspeaker in price. It certainly is in terms of performance. The, the system is certainly a statement of intent in terms of engineering and sound quality for anything we're going to design from now on. We've, we've set the bar a lot higher and all we're going to try to do from now on is try to make everything as good as this. We knew that when we were going to build the 800, we were going to incorporate some of the same, some of the same components. So we incorporate the same. The mid range is, is effectively the same. Uh, the head is the same. But the relative position of these the, these components to the other components and the size of the other components, for instance, the the, the, the larger base unit, the distance between the voice coils is all different. So your your tuning is naturally going to be different. We were able to. Uh, squeeze and put even more technologies and uh, improvements in the parts and components which are ma making the 800 the outstanding product it is. So we want the, the drive unit to reproduce the base node without adding anything at all to that signal. So reproducing exactly the harmonic content of the original music. So in order to do that you have to be very linear. So turn the electrical signal coming from the amplifier into an acoustic pressure signal, identical in shape. The balance between the size and the sensitivities of all the units are finely tuned uh, to get a performance which is uh, the best you can extract from those drive units. We had the aerofoil on the 8 inch on the other two, but now we've got the aerofoil technology on, on the 10 inch and having two 10 inches is, uh, is a good place to be if you want to get a good extension. We have improved uh, the breakup frequency for the use of the aerofoil cone. We have improved the distortion uh, by both using the aerofoil cone and linearizing the motor and the suspensions. This new driving it, even though it's the same, it's the same diameter as the previous generation, has been completely redesigned. So it's new cone, new suspension, uh, new mode system, new coil. Uh, since we have a um, much larger voice call in the 10-inch unit, uh, using the uh, hybrid approach of the smaller units where we have both a damping uh, foam and a carbon skin on top, uh, 
uh, was not the best option because of the uh, additional mass such a huge quantity of foam would have put on top of the cone. And uh, instead of going for an hybrid approach, we were, let's say, faithful to the sandwich philosophy and we developed on purpose a sandwich dust cap, uh, which is basically replicating the aerofold structure being a, a carbon skin, synthetic foam, carbon skin, sandwich structure. So you might think that it's particularly unusual for, uh, for low frequency driving it to have an impact on the, on the mid-range sound. But you have to remember that uh, bass units, when they produce distortion, will produce distortion at frequency higher than the, the band they're supposed to reproduce, basically the mid-range. So by getting rid of all the distortion coming from that, you need to effectively uh, make the mid-range sound a lot, a lot cleaner, a lot more neutral. You know, the, the, the motors are different, the chassis are different, the cones are different, the, you know, all, all of these little components are all different from the previous, but when they've all added together, they're all their little differences. It's almost like it's, it's an unreal change. Bowers and Wilkins' technology has always been ahead of its time, but never quite so far ahead as the Diamond Dome Tweeter. In the 1980s, Bowers and Wilkins engineers at the Stenning Research Establishment theorised that Diamond was the closest you could get to the theoretically perfect tweeter, a tweeter that is infinitely light and infinitely rigid. But diamonds take millions of years to form and are also incredibly expensive. It was only when scientists at Element 6, part of the De Beers Group, developed a process where incredibly thin diamond could be created using chemical vapour deposition that Bowers and Wilkins saw the opportunity to incorporate them into speakers. The process involves temperatures as hot as the surface of the sun and very careful handling, but the benefits for treble performance are incredible. Compared to the standard breakup of an aluminium tweeter at 38 kHz, Bowers and Wilkins' diamond tweeters break up at 70 kHz, well above the limit of human hearing, and as a result, push unwanted resonances way beyond what the listener can hear. The result is the clearest, most realistic treble ever heard, bringing the smallest musical details to life. And with the new 800 series diamond, the Diamond Dome now sits in an all-new solid-body tweeter housing, further enhancing its performance. Diamond never sounded so good. The only major component to be carried across to the new 800 series Diamond from the previous range is the Diamond Dome tweeter. However, all the components around the dome itself have been redesigned and improved. The new solid body tweeter housing is the result of intensive investigation into what could be improved with the previous series. Following that investigation, a period of research into shapes, materials and other elements led Bowers and Wilkins to develop a tweeter housing milled from a single billet of aluminium, replacing the hollow housing that was used previously. The benefits are manifold. The higher mass makes it more inert. It provides more control over breakup modes. And it works as a massive heat sink for the tweeter. It also allows for integrated tube loading for a reduction in the reflection of unwanted sound from the back of the dome, while a new decoupling design allows for even greater sense of space around the high frequency elements of the audio. Plus, a new protective steel grille mesh protects the fragile dome. All this leads to a dramatic improvement in the overall performance, taking Diamond Dome tweeters to the next level. In 1974, Bowers and Wilkins pioneered the use of Kevlar as a mid-range cone material, and for 40 years it was developed and improved. But Bowers and Wilkins engineers continuously researched new materials, 
as they constantly strive to improve performance. In 2007, they made a promising development and the new Continuum Cone is the result of an eight-year R&D project that went through over 70 iterations. The resulting transducer is based on the same controlled breakup theory that made Kevlar so appealing and is a coated woven material, but it offers dramatic improvements in sound performance. It works not by disrupting audible reflections, but instead it's as though the sound waves don't see the edge of the cone. So we could talk about very low uh, sound coloration, we could talk about very low noise floor, or we could describe it in a very, in a very different way by just saying that we did to the Kevlar cone uh, what we did about 10 years ago to the aluminium tweeter dome by using diamond. The resulting drive unit delivers unheard of clarity in the mid-range with natural, open and detailed performance that brings out the best in recordings with every speaker in the new 800 series diamond. Matrix provides the backbone for Bowers and Wilkins speakers and has been part of the 800 series since the Matrix 800 was launched in 1987. Matrix is an internal structure that works like the bracing of a ship's hull, with crisscrossed interlocking panels keeping our cabinets rigid and inert. For the 800 series diamond, we've introduced our most radical rethink of the Matrix concept yet. Our examination of the behaviour of the old matrix led us to conclude that we could achieve superior stiffness using fewer but thicker wooden components. So the new internal panels are thicker and solid plywood has replaced MDF. In addition, the new structure is critically braced with aluminium and steel components in all headed products. Another new innovation is the way the base driver pods now couple directly into the matrix itself, which optimally couples the drive units into the stiffer parts of the assembly. Altogether, it's the most solid matrix system we've ever built. In the outgoing 800 series, plinths were used to house the crossover components in the larger headed models. This had certain advantages. By putting the sensitive crossover components into their own external volume, we gained mechanical and electrical isolation and were also able to use the large surface area of the plinth itself as a heatsink component. However, our research proved that we could do better. In the new 800 series diamond, we've introduced a solid metal plinth. This is constructed from a single piece of zinc aluminium alloy. Now, the sensitive crossover components are housed in a separate volume in the rear of the loudspeaker, rather than in the plinth, and use the metal extrusion as a heat sink. This reduces the overall area and height of the plinth. Plus, the thicker construction makes for a stiffer design that avoids the issues we highlighted in the older models. We've also aligned the spikes with the supporting feet in the base of the cabinet so that the mass of the new speaker is transferred far more effectively onto its spikes. Finally, to enhance the user experience, we have developed a system where the spikes can be unwound into place once the speaker has been positioned using its inbuilt casters. The result? Better sound and a better experience for the customer. It's, it's grander, you know, it's like, um, it's more believable, but all the, tom you know, all the timbres are closer to being correct as well. Uh, it, it, it's, it's a better illusion than it was with 802 even. 800D3 has the ability to convince the listener that the sounds that they're hearing are real sounds, true sounds. And in that sense, it puts you closer to the performance than any other loudspeaker we produce. Uh, it's still something you can fit in your lounge, but it gives you exactly the same feeling 
of a live experience in terms of bass performances. So it, what you would expect to hear at the concert or you would expect to hear in a club, it's all there. It's not about just horsepower. Uh, this incredible behavior of driving it allows us to to reproduce voices particularly well and, and reproduce fine details uh, coming from the room acoustics particularly well as well. So the ambient sounds are very, very realistic as well. Where we cross over between the bass and the mid sections is a huge qualitative difference between even the 802. Um, yeah, the, 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 that, was the, that was one of the big differences. Uh, yeah, there's lots of big differences when you start to make something that is bigger and grander, but that one was the first thing that I really noticed between the two. Once we got the tuning somewhere kind of near, you know, get where you roughly get the imaging where you want it, and then the, yeah, the, the, this just the bottom end of the piano is just like sounded real, you know, it's really good. The large scale and very high end products we designed in the past were were quite fun in the bass, uh, very very enjoyable. But this is the first time we reach this this incredible combination of uh, of power and refinement at the same time. It's an unbelievable um, window into the soul of what you want to listen to. And it's an unbelievable uh, truth device, if you like. It's not uh, a product you would uh, change, it's like an investment when you buy a house. You're not talking about, well, maybe next year I will find a better house. Well, it's probably a few decades before someone could match these performances. I don't think that there is another one that is, that is as good as that, that anybody has made, honestly. Um, and yes, I have heard a lot of speakers in a lot of different rooms and a lot of, you know, a lot of different amplifiers to do them, etc. And this one seems to win hands down.